of Spartan Sports Central Playoff Edition. Today we'll recap the Spartans' outstanding football season, preview the boys and girls basketball teams, and profile two of the top running backs in the area who happen to be Stafford Spartan teammates. Welcome back, Coach Counter. Thanks. All right, so you guys finished the season six and four. We know on the field it was, you know, better than that, but um, talk about your thoughts on the season um, for 2016 so far. Well, it was another great year, you know, on the field. We were 9-0 going to play El Campo, and uh, they were 9-0, and and it was a great game down there. And we didn't play as well as we needed to in the second half, and uh, a lot of credit goes to them. Uh, again, they're highly ranked in the state, and uh, hopefully in the long run that loss will help us in the playoffs. Okay, we have a pretty good draw for the playoffs for the folks watching at home. Uh, we get Houston Worthing in the first round, and we'll talk about that in the next segment of the playoff preview. But now, you know, to kind of recap the season, Dave Campbell's Texas football put us at number six, even though we were idle last week. Is that kind of a pleasant surprise? Well, not necessarily, because uh, I've felt all year that us and El Campo were both top ten teams in the state, and, and that game, you know, proved to be a great game, and uh, we just uh, didn't finish it in the second half, and, you know, had the lead at halftime. But uh, I think El Campo and Stafford and, and Bay City also in our district is very good that uh, – all of us can win a lot of playoff games. Okay, and then your quarterback, Walter White, 23 touchdown passes, um, and he didn't even play the full game because you guys were up by so much. Just talk about you know, his performance this year. Yeah, Walter was, has just been unbelievable all year. You know, and Stats can be misleading because when you get a big lead, or at least in our case, we're not gonna throw the ball in the fourth quarter when we're beating somebody by a lot of points. We're not gonna try to run the score up on anybody. So if you look at his stats and projected them over a a full four quarter game for the whole season, which I think he only played in the fourth quarter, maybe two games this year. Um, he could have had 30 touchdown passes easily and, and you know, many more yards passing. So he, he, he's just been tremendous this year. Okay, and then James Brown just got an offer from um, University of Montana. Sometimes when we're sitting in that Houston traffic, Montana can sound pretty good. Yeah, I think it was 42 up there this weekend. He flew up and watched him play Saturday night. And then when I talked to the assistant coach, the running back coach, he said it was 42. And I told James today, you know, it's going to get a lot colder than that. So, uh, but that's a great program. And uh, wherever James goes, he's going to do well. Okay. And then you had um, Hezekiah Jones, who's been kind of the leader of that receiving core. He caught his uh, 100th career reception in the last game of the season a couple weeks ago. Just talk about you know what he's meant to the program? Yeah, and, and, and again, that's another area where stats can be misleading because if he was our only receiver, he could have even more catches. And, uh, you know, we've got Jalen Curry that's caught some passes this year, uh, Kenneth Bodwin, uh, uh, Desmond Mathis. So we, we're trying to spread the ball around. Obviously, Hez gets most of the catches. Uh, but uh, he, yeah, when you told me it was 100 receptions for his career, that's, that's pretty impressive. Okay, and then defensively, I think eight out of the ten games was two touchdowns or less. Six of the ten, it was um, one touchdown or less. So that's, you know, really um, quite a feat for your defense and Coach uh, Ken Savannah, the defensive coordinator. Defense, a lot of times, was the first team wasn't playing in the fourth quarter or sometimes even in the third quarter we were putting subs in. So, again, if those guys would have played the full four quarters of all those games, they, they probably would have had a couple more shutouts and would have given up less points. Okay, and then I know when, when you came here, it was um, important for you to bring Coach Savannah on board with you. How long have you worked with him? And just talk about that um, coaching relationship. Oh, geez, let's see. Uh, so four years here at Stafford and then 13 years previous there. So I guess this is our 17th year uh, working together. And uh, I tell people this all the time, and it's a true story that uh, our former superintendent, uh, Dr. Hint, I, I literally told him that I wouldn't accept a job if uh, we didn't hire Coach Savannah. Uh, that's how strong I felt about bringing him over here. And, uh, you know, he's done a great job, not just as a defensive coordinator, he's assistant head coach, and uh, he's a great motivator for the players. Okay, great, great. And um, any other closing thoughts on the regular season of 2016? No, just another great year. Very proud of the players and the coaches. Uh, again, this senior class, what they've done uh, the last few years uh, is unbelievable. If you look at the win-loss record uh, from their freshman year where they went undefeated as freshmen and then sophomore year, uh, most of them, or 10 of them started on the varsity as sophomores and many others were on the varsity. They've just uh, been 10-0 last year and then a great season this year. So they've won a lot of football games. 
How would this team compare to past uh, Stafford varsity football teams? Well, at this point, it, this has uh, the opportunity or the chance to be the best team ever in Stafford. But it's all going to depend. Best team ever. Wow. Oh, yeah, for sure. It, it all depends on how we do in the playoffs. And that's what we've talked about from day one. Uh, you know, we wanted to win the district championship, but our goals are, are much loftier than those, okay. than just district championship. We want to make a deep playoff run. Uh, I don't say this normally, but this team has the talent, I think, to uh, to win the state championship. Now, we got to take it one game at a time, but uh, hopefully if we can, you know, win the first round, win the second round, and get on a roll again like we were during the regular season, we, we have a chance to go a long way. Okay. And um, the guys are preparing for that this week, huh? Absolutely. We're, we're going to be disappointed if we're not playing a playoff game in December. That's that's what we've said from day one. And to play a playoff game in December, that would be the fourth round. So hopefully we can we can make it that far. Okay. Well, best of luck, Coach. All right, Mike. Thank you. And next up, we're going to be talking to the Stafford boys and girls basketball coaches. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor to a life of courage and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, the Marines. Dad, we need to talk. If you're not gonna listen to me, who will you listen to? Jeffrey. Is that Marsha Gay Harden? I think so. You're getting older. Not that old. Your brain is changing. That's what I was saying. Honey, I've got experience with this. Jeffrey, brain health is all about making the most of your brain as you age. Really? Go. Oh, where did she go? Learn what you can do to help keep your brain healthy at brainhealth.gov. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. What could you lose in a home fire? Your possessions, your home, your memories. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Make sure you have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones because fire is everyone's fight. We taught him how to hit a baseball, how to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Hello, welcome back to the show. I'm glad to be here with Stafford High boys basketball coach Torrance Botts. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you too. And Stafford High girls basketball coach Miyoshi Oliver. Good to see you as well. All right, so um, I know some of the fall sports are wrapping up. We got basketball starting. You guys pretty excited about that? Yes, I'm, I'm very excited. Okay, great. And I know you guys have already played a game, but you have a tournament coming up this weekend down at West Columbia. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Um, it's a six-game tournament, and um, we play two games a day, and our first game begins on Thursday. Uh, okay. I think it's against Sweeney, the first game. Okay, great, great. And then, Coach, your season opener is next Tuesday at Waller. Tell me about what you know about that game at this point. Well, actually, we've been playing Waller uh, each year, I guess, past 11 years I've been here. Uh, this one here will probably be a little bit more exciting. Will be with the girls. Uh, then we have double a, a doubleheader. Mm -hmm. Then we have a former uh, head girls basketball coach, 
the Keisha Durham will be there. So it should be an exciting game. Oh, wow. I know they're going to be fired up and ready to go. Uh, so I'm actually looking forward to it. Okay, and then let's talk uh, home openers. You guys, uh, the girls team, you have November 22nd, you get El Campo. Yes. You're looking forward to that? Yes, I'm very excited about that, to be able to play home in front of our home crowd. Okay, and then you guys open against a familiar foe, Wharton. <laughs> now, that seems like every game is a nail-biter against Wharton. I know. Uh, a lot of history. Uh, past couple years, they've been the team to take us out uh, in the playoffs in the first round. Uh, they're coming into the year ranked number nine preseason in the state. Uh, we're coming into the year preseason ranked number 21. Uh, this is great. You know, to start the season, it's going to be a real good test for us to see where we are right now and going forward. Okay, and that game's going to be on November 19th at noon. And, um, of course, you guys beat Wharton last year early in the season, lost him in the playoffs. Yeah. But um, now you're a pretty busy guy because you got football playoffs and you're balancing that with basketball. How do you, how do you sleep? That, <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> But it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity and, and the pleasure of playing them both at the high school and college level. Uh, been here at Stafford. I'm, you know, the coaches are great to work with. The kids are great to work with. So, you know, at this point, you know, 11 years doing it at Stafford, you kind of don't think about it anymore. Okay, yeah, that success kind of <laughs> gets you used to it. So, Coach Oliver, you won a national championship at Tarleton State. I know a lot of people think of Stephenville is a rodeo town, but they play a little basketball up there too. Yeah, and actually these past couple of years have gotten a lot better as far as the basketball program. So I know the men made it pretty far in the tournament last year. So this year, hopefully the women will follow what Coach Reisman did. Okay, and then you played your basketball, was it basketball and football, right, at University was, of Houston? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, tell me about that. Well, it was great. Uh, I still talk about it to this day. Uh, Clyde Drexler was our head coach there. so. You know, that was real exciting. Uh, he was only there for two years. So that, that glitz and glamour kind of went away when he left. Uh, but, you know, we had Ray McCallum come in. I, I played with him for a year. And then after that, I played two years uh, as a backup quarterback under Dana Demo on the football team. Okay, great. So what do you guys like about the most about being at Stafford? I personally, I, I like, uh, it's like a little gym. Uh, you know, I think we have a, a great athletic program there. The school has done a complete 180 since I've been there with the whole career uh, in technology. The turf is there. I've always thought that our basketball stadium is like one of the finest in the state. Uh, so I like the place. I, I think not a lot of people know about it, but with what we've been doing in the past, people are really starting to figure out that that's just not a little small school, you know, ducked off in between four big four A's and five A's. Yeah. What about you, Coach Oliver? And for me, it's definitely the coaching staff. I mean, especially working side by side with Coach Potts and being there and sharing the basketball arena. It's it's great and just having support from you know Coach Counter and all the other coaches that are there. Okay, great. Well, we wish you both well on the beginning oh, of your thank season, you. and thank I'm sure you. we'll. See you Thank both you, after the after the new year when we record some more episodes. Okay. Looking forward so, to it. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up is a feature on Stafford running backs, James Brown and Cam Montgomery. Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh, and makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook because when I grow up, I want to be a cook too. We have the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. I believe in you. Just four simple words. But to a child in need, they mean the world. When you support a child through Save the Children, you're saying, I believe in you. You're worthy of good nutrition, quality health care, and education. I believe in you. Just four simple words that can bring hope, that can change a life. Visit sponsor.savethechildren.org slash believe today and tell a child in need, I believe in you. Some places have the power to transform us, connect us, move us. This is the power of place. The power of parks and open spaces to improve cities, communities, and ourselves. 
This is the work of the Trust for Public Land, putting open space within reach of every person in America. Help us create the power of place and healthier, happier communities nationwide. You can't buy a best friend, but you can adopt one. Cause we're connected. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. It's very rare that one team has two running backs as strong as James Brown and Cam Montgomery, but the Spartans are very fortunate this year to have both of these student athletes on the same team. Football is obviously a team sport, and the team consists of different positions with different roles. Running backs are there to receive handoffs, block for the quarterback, or catch passes. The Stafford Spartans have two remarkable running backs who have earned a distinctive nickname. We call them the dynamic duo. Uh, they're both averaging over 11 yards a carry, which every time they touch the ball, it's a first down, which is <coughs> phenomenal for uh, two running backs in the same backfield to average over 11. I think James is averaging 11.7 and Cam is averaging 11.4. So, you know, you can't ask for more as a running back coach if they, they're averaging 11 yards a carry. That's the first time, first down every time you touch the ball, so. He's referring to Cam Montgomery and James Brown, two seniors who have made their mark on team stats. It's real effective because we both bring um, the speed aspect to the game. And, you know, it's just great having both of us, you know, real fast out of the backfield. And Yeah, we've got a, a good bond with the running back position, uh, but we're still a part of the whole team. They're both two type of run, two different styles of running backs. Uh, Cam is more of a slasher with speed, and James is more of an uh, elusive runner and they complement each other. James runs with a lot of power and Cam's a lot of speed. In football and in school, both have learned the value of hard work. The most important things that I've learned are discipline and like self-control in Stafford. You should always like know what you're doing and follow the instructions and, and don't be afraid to be a leader here at Stafford High School. Um, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, I mean, there's a, a, a lot of time that I put into this, um, countless hours of training, um, running track, you know, um, all kinds of things, workouts, uh, even focusing, studying other running backs and other professionals, you know, there's a lot that goes into the art of football in general. The hard work continues off the field, in the classroom. Do you have a favorite class? Yes. Uh, it's not like math or, it's an advertising class. I have an advertising class. and. Uh, I like the field of advertising, and the advertising teacher, Mr. Nevins, actually told me that I'd be really good at it and um, that I've got the character for it. So that's something I'm looking forward to pursuing. My favorite class, um, I have to say English because I feel like I'm really good with words, especially when it comes to essays and, you know, poems and everything. So, Both young men have their sights set on the future. Cam is moving on to play football for Rice University after graduation. James is still mulling his options. Going their separate ways, what they have in common is a dream. I hope to play college football, and I will. Um, after that, 
uh, hopefully, you know, the ultimate dream for a uh, young football player is to play in the NFL, so that. And um, as far as plan B, I really don't have one yet. I don't know what I want to major in yet either, so. Never give up on what you wanted to pursue. Everyone wants to be an NFL superstar, but it requires hard work and, you know, rel relentless effort. So why not try, you know what I mean? Reaching the end of their football days at Stafford, they know they didn't reach success by themselves. Um, the offensive line deserves every touchdown that we've ever scored. Uh, without them, we, we really wouldn't be able to do much. They block hard every play. They work hard every practice, and uh, they deserve everything that we earn. Oh, man, all the glory goes to the offensive line. Without them, nothing would be possible in, um, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, I'd like to thank my whole family. Um, they, they're, they're great people. They support me. Um, they keep me going, you know. Uh, whenever you feel like it's kind of too much, they'll tell you that it's okay. You need to continue doing what you're doing because um, without doing what you were doing before, you won't be where you are now. And uh, I would also like to thank Coach Counter, you know, because without him believing in me or James, uh, we wouldn't be able to do the things we do on the field. Two people. A big thanks to my mom and my oldest brother. I mean, I, I couldn't have done it without them too. For Spartan Sports Central, I'm John Woods. Wow, those are two great student athletes. After the break, you'll hear a playoff preview, Stafford's first playoff game against Houston Worthing. Millions of Americans have hepatitis C, but many don't know it. People born from 1945 to 1965 are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. People can live for decades without symptoms. Left untreated, hepatitis C can lead to liver cancer. The treatments are now available that can cure hepatitis C. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. We got tested. It could save your life. Everyone deserves a decent place to live. Everyone. When a future homeowner partners with Habitat for Humanity to build or improve a home, they build a better future for themselves and their families. For my family. For my family. For, for my, my family. family. With a little help, we all have the potential to stand on our own. Potential. 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 Visit Habitat.org to provide help to families like these today. There's a threat targeting America, Lyme disease. Spread by tiny ticks, this dangerous disease can cause life-changing health problems and is now more widespread than West Nile tuberculosis and HIV AIDS combined. So it's time for us to target Lyme disease. That means checking for ticks when you've been outside and seeing a doctor if you experience the warning signs, which can include joint pain and flu-like symptoms. Learn how you can target Lyme disease at targetlyme.org. Welcome back. Now it's the time you've all been waiting for to discuss the Spartans' first round playoff opponent, Houston Worthing. Welcome back, Coach Counter. Thanks for having me. All right, so you got Houston Worthing in the first round, and I was reading the scouting report. Sounds like they have this hard-hitting linebacker named uh, Mike Singletary. <laughs> they did at one point. I, uh, I must I'm glad have, they don't have him now. Yeah, I must have read the 1975 yeah. scouting report. I got the wrong one. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, Worthing, even though they're 5-5, five and five, still a formidable opponent. Yes, they have a lot of skilled kids that are returning that are all district players. They, um, they're very quick, very athletic. It, they're they're going to rep, represent a challenge like any opponent would in the playoffs. Okay, and then Worthing, of course, is a, um, they're a team that's not located far from us, about 16 miles away. Do our kids have some familiarity with some of their kids? I know that we've played them in seven-on-seven seven the last couple summers. And in fact, the kids reminded me uh, fifth period just before I came over here today that they beat us in seven-on-seven, seven, not this last summer, but two summers ago. Okay, wow. So that's, um, they have some ta talent in the passing game then? Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, they're skilled kids on offense and defense, and some of them go both ways. They're, they're very quick, very fast, very talented. What about as far as depth? Do we have an edge there? We do. We feel like we do have an edge. They only have about 28 players on their varsity roster, and we'll, we're uh, well over 40, so uh, they have more players going both ways than we do, and, and those guys are probably playing on all the special teams too. Do you plan on calling up some kids from freshman and JV? We have a couple uh, JV guys that we're going to move up and uh, maybe a handful of freshmen that we're going to move up. 
And then the game is going to be 7 p.m. on Friday at Stafford Spartan Stadium. How big is that home field advantage for us? Well, it's great for us. You know, we always prefer to play at home, uh, and we knew we'd probably play at home or right down the street at Butler on 90. So uh, we won the coin toss and uh, playing at home, so that's great. That's a chance for our 27 seniors to play in front of their home crowd one more time. Absolutely, yeah. And just uh, in the 7 o'clock start, the game will get over a little bit earlier. So um, HISD plays all their games at 7 o'clock, so we agreed to that, and uh, we're looking forward to having another game at home. Okay, yeah, and I know not to look forward too far, but in the earlier segment you said this might be the best Stafford High football team ever. Now, to give the folks at home a recap, the last um, four years we've had great seasons, and, but our seasons have all ended in the second round against schools from East Texas. Correct. What do you think could be different about this team um, as opposed to our uh, past teams? Well, hopefully just experience because, uh, again, two years ago, 10 of these seniors started on varsity as a sophomore. And uh, so we're a, we're a talented team, but we're also a very experienced team. And uh, we've played a tougher schedule than any of the other previous years. Uh, so we've, we've got the opportunity to, uh, to go a long ways in the playoffs. It's just a matter of playing well. That, in the other night against El Campo, we didn't play well in the second half. We didn't stop the run and we didn't, uh, we didn't move the ball on offense. And uh, we can't go three and out against a quality opponent like that in the second round of the playoff or we'll lose again. The winner of our game will play Kilgore or Navasota, who we actually defeated 51 to six earlier in the season. Um, I know you scouted uh, Kilgore this past week. What did, what did you see from them? Very good team, uh, very athletic also. Got a little option quarterback that's real good. Uh, now I know I talked to their coach just on the phone just a little while ago and Navasota's got their real good running back back the last couple of weeks and uh, he was out when we played him with an eye injury. So uh, I think Navasota scored 35 points the last couple of weeks. So they kind of got it rolling a little bit. So. Um, I expect Navasota to give Kilgore a good game, that but game's we'll not, be happy to play either one of them. That game's not the slam dunk it may have been four or five weeks ago. No, no. Okay. From what I understand, Navasota's playing a lot better now than they were earlier in the year. Okay, okay. And um, is preparation change at all for you guys as far as the playoffs as opposed to, you know, um, the regular season games? Are the kids a little bit, um, you know, more excited in practice? Well, we'll find out today, uh, you know, this time of the year with the time change, it's going to get dark earlier, so we may have to turn the stadium lights on at the end of practice. And uh, so it is a little bit different atmosphere at practice, but we really try to stay in a routine. Our Monday practice is going to be the same as it's been every Monday all year, and Tuesday is going to be the same. We're going we're gonna to treat each game the same, and, and we're in a routine. And the kids, again, the experienced kids, they, they know exactly what we're going to do in practice every day. How was the bye week for you? Were you able to get refreshed a little bit? Absolutely. You know, we're, we got the coaches and the players got some well needed rest. And uh, so I think we'll be excited and we've got our legs underneath us a little bit and we should have a lot of energy Friday night. Okay. So um, what about the fan? Um, are you expecting a lot of fans to come out for this one and support the team? I hope so. You know, like you said, it's another opportunity for our fans and parents or everyone to see these seniors play one more time at our stadium, which we weren't sure that, you know, if that was going to happen or not. So uh, hopefully we've got a big crowd there and, and have a good game. I know with Worthing being talented on both sides of the ball, how important is it to kind of establish that lead right out of the gate and just kind of put them away early? Absolutely. Yeah, we always want to come out fast. I mean, whether we're on the road or at home, you want to come out fast. And uh, like I think I said one week before that, you know, if you're at home, we get your crowd into the game. If you're on the road, it takes our crowd out of the game. So we're always trying to get a quick start. Thanks for being here, Coach. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. All right. The playoffs are coming up on Friday. We encourage everyone to come out. And we'll see you again on Spartan Sports Central in 2017. This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.